take up the offering this morning. Do pray for the service. Pray the Lord just have his way here this morning. Uh, pray for Brother Curry as he comes. Uh, most of all, pray for the lost. Perhaps you could pray for Jesus made me whole. Now let us have a little talk with you. 
It made a difference in my life when I accepted Him as my Savior. Yes. Now look, there's a lot of folks that play around, a lot of folks that play church, amen? I, there's a lot of so-called Christians, but you're Christians in name only. Well, I don't want to be just a child of God in name only, amen? I, look, you might carry somebody's name, but never act nothing like them. Being a Christian means to be Christ-like and to be yeah. one of His. Yeah. Ain't you glad to know that you can be born again? Amen. Yeah. Ain't you glad to know that you can be a part of the family of God? Amen. Yeah. Look, if you're not a part of the family of God, you know where you're headed to? You ain't headed to heaven. Amen. Right. Right. If ain't but two places to go, if you ain't going to heaven, you must be going to hell. Right. Let me just tell you something. You say, well, God wouldn't send nobody to hell. Well, I'll just tell you right now. Look, I think your sister Miranda shared something on Facebook this week. It touched my heart, sis. So, I tell you what, we was God never sent anybody there. We was on that. We started that journey on our own. Amen. 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 Uh, we started that journey on our own, heading to hell. But God gave us a way. Yeah, when He gave His Son to get us off that road. Amen. Amen. I, I hope if you leave here before you leave here today, you know Jesus is right. yours. So, but in the book of Hebrews, chapter number 12, verse number 1, the Bible says this, Wherefore, uh, seeing we are all, we also are compassed about uh, with so great a cloud of witness, let us lay aside every weight and the sin uh, which does easily beset us, and let us run with patience uh, the race that is set before us. Looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith, uh, for, who, for who for the joy was set before Him uh, endured the cross, uh, despising the shame, uh, and is set down at the right hand, at the right hand of, of the throne of God. Let us pray. Hear me, Father. We come to you today with God and someone that shall before thee. Lord, I thank you for another day, another opportunity, God, uh, just to be able to come out to your house, uh, to be in thy presence, Lord. I thank you for each one that's here this morning. Uh, I don't know their hearts nor their burdens. Uh, I don't know what they, what they actually need here this morning, Lord, uh, but I do know they need you. Uh, and I pray to every Father, if anyone here today, uh, God, needs to make that move, they'll make it quick. Uh, and Lord, they'll just trust in you with all things and everything. Uh, I pray for this uh, service today. God will get the devil as far away from here as possible. Uh, he won't hinder this service today nor this message. Uh, God, we won't stand in the way of anything that you've got in store. And I pray to heavenly Father, you'll help me to be a light for me yeah, in all things. And I pray, God, most of all, if there's one here that don't know you as their personal Savior, Lord, uh, Lord, don't even let them wait to the end of the service. God, get them on an altar right now. Uh, let them see, dear Lord, that they need you. Uh, Lord, I have never needed you before. Uh, and I pray, God, you'll take heaven light back to church and you'll help it to grow to be a light for you. And uh, Lord, that we'll decide others, uh, that we'll disciple Christians, Lord, to be the mold them in your image, to be what you would have them to be. Uh, and Lord, for those that are lost, we'll draw them in to be saved before it's everlasting too late. We give you all the glory tonight and today, dear Lord, not our will be done, but mine in Jesus, but in any Christ. Amen. Amen. Listen, I was thinking here, the Lord put this message on our heart some time ago, and I was thinking there about, about the, uh, this message, and what it talks about, about being uh, about laying aside every weight. And man, alive is hard sometimes. Don't you think? Hey, man. Uh, sometimes we get burdened down uh, before we ever realize that we're even burdened down. Hey, man. Uh, sometimes we pick up things on our own. Sometimes we do things on our own. Uh, I read a story a long time ago that talked about. Uh, how they uh, would catch monkeys and and uh, the story the, the 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 article I was reading or whatever I was watching that they talked about how they were catching monkeys and what they do they get a gourd and they take that gourd and they cut the bottom off or cut the bottom off the gourd or something or or they even take a smaller gourd and uh, a monkey could stick its hand down in they tie that gourd up and they take something kind of shiny. Uh, or they'd take some type of food and they'd put down in that gourd and that monkey would reach his hand down in that gourd and when he reached his hand through the neck of that gourd he'd grab a hold of whatever was there and he couldn't pull his hand out. And the monkey was caught. And you said, well, how stupid is that? Amen. I mean, how crazy is it? All you have to do is just kind of turn loose so what's got your hand, he got his hand in. Surely he could get his hand out, right? Amen. 
Well, let me just tell you how stupid that is. We're just exactly the same way. Amen. The old devil will start to shine something flashy in front of us, and we want to grab a hold of it. Amen. We want to take a hold of it before you know it. We've got a load. Amen. I know some people want to. I mean, I come in, I do all kind of crazy things, Donna boys. Amen. I, I want you to just hold on to that for me for just a little while. Let me, you hold on to that for me for just a little while. Amen. And I was thinking, you know, a lot of times in our life, uh, we began to get bound down and we began to pick up things along the way. Uh, and, but before you know it, we think we've, we've got a load. Amen. Uh, listen, I, now those are just little old backpacks. They don't weigh that much food. Amen. Uh, I mean, uh, huh? Yeah, that's right. Amen. Listen, about 50 pounds. Amen. Uh, listen, I wasn't going to give to her because I know that she's used to toting a load. Amen. Uh, she's used to carrying a bunch back there. Amen. Uh, but let me just tell you, some a lot of us today, we've got custom to carrying a load ourselves. Amen. We've got a custom to carrying a lot of things around in our life, a lot of baggage that we didn't don't need. Amen. A lot of us today have been in times of our life. You might even be here today, and we've had a grudge to get somebody. Amen. I remember, I remember Brother Eddie telling a story about two of the two fellows that went to church together, wouldn't talk to one another, sat on opposite sides of the church. Revival broke out. They made up. I couldn't even remember what they got mad about. Amen. Uh, well, let me tell you something what a grudge will do. Uh, I don't care if you've got a fault or an all to give somebody. The Bible says if you've got a problem with somebody, uh, take it to the person. Amen. Uh, don't get on Facebook. Don't get on Instagram and everything else. Uh, talk about everybody else. Uh, hey, but let me tell you something. Get your problem dealt with. Uh, hey, I'm here to tell you today. Uh, when you have that kind of stuff in your life, uh, all you've done uh, is pick it up uh, and put it in the bag. Yeah. You just got a little something else to carry. Amen. Uh, every now and then, uh, the load gets a little heavy. Uh, and it gets a little heavier and a little heavier. And then we began uh, to hold on to that thing. Uh, and then we began to carry that thing around us. And it binds us down and keeps yes. us uh, from really serving God. Amen. Amen. Right. Why is it that we get things in our life? That will allow us to, the, the, you know, a lot of times we get mad at folks. You ever been mad at somebody and they wasn't mad at you? Look, a lot of times we're mad at folks and they not, we're living a miserable life. And the person that we're mad at, they're going on and being happy. Amen? I mean, just going on and being happy. Now, look, I'm kind of first person. If I'm going to be miserable, I want everybody else to be miserable. Don't you hear? Amen. Hey, man, look. Hey, man, I don't doubt it, brother. <laughs> Amen. Look, you know what the problem with that is? If we're happy, we ought to want everybody else to be happy. Amen. Amen. Right. We ought to stay in the place of happy. So, you know what the Bible says about happiness? Uh, happy is he whose God is Lord. Amen. 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 Uh, listen, let me tell you something. If the God I was serving, uh, if the things I was serving out in this world wasn't him, uh, if the things I was serving out in the world came before him, uh, then I'll tell you what I'd do. Uh, I'd get that stuff out of the way, uh, and I'd get God back where it belongs, uh, yeah. or I could get happy again. Yeah. Hey man, yes. so many people here today. I mean, we allow this grudges to go on, keep us from really serving God, keep us from hitting, keep us from really doing what God would have us to do. I say, you don't know how big, a, you don't know what a grudge does to you. Just because you hold it against, let me show you what a grudge feels like. Let me show you what a grudge feels like. This, that's what a grudge feels like. Hey man, that's what grudges are. You need to know what grudge feels like too, don't you? Look, I think you need to know whatever I feel like. You may not have one, you may have one. I don't know. Listen, I ain't gonna call nobody out. I mean, we all got things, amen, going on in our life. Hey, then we got some friends, amen. The uh, Bible tells us uh, about friends, don't it? Uh, listen, you, you ever really just want to get in there and serve God? And you really just want to, man, I'd turn it all over to God if it wasn't for my friends, amen. Uh, we got friends keeping us from living godly, godly lives. Uh, we got friends that are stopping us uh, from turning it all over to the Lord. Uh, well, listen, I'd go on that trip if I just had, if it wasn't for my friends, amen. Uh, I'd get in there and I'd really serve God. Now, if the, if the, I'm, I'm afraid I'll have to lose some friends. Amen. I'm afraid I'm not going to. Here's what your friends are, sis. 
That's what your friends feel like right there. That's what they're doing. They're keeping you from serving God. Amen. Your friends are going around all over the place, young man. That's what friends will do for you. They'll weigh you down to where you can't even do nothing for the Lord. Hey, I want to serve God. I want to sing in the choir. But what you're doing, you're carrying that thing around, holding on to it. Them friends are keeping you from really being able to serve God. Hey, let me tell you, if you don't have a friend that'll walk Walk with you down to the church house. If you ain't got a friend, hey, it'll get up in the choir and sing with you. Let me tell you something. You ain't got much of friends. Hey, man, let's keep tying this down. Yeah. Pull us out of the world. Let me ask you this. You know how to swim? How would you like to swim with that on your back? Probably sing, don't you? You're in life sea right now. You're in life sea right now. I promise you, there's boys and there's, there's girls and there's all kinds of friends that'll try to pull you down. They'll try to hinder you and keep you from serving God. You'll never be able to serve God with that on your back. Amen. It'll make it so difficult. It'll make it so impossible Hey, that you'll want to give up and you'll not want to go back. You'll not want to do those things because it's easier to go out there and do the things of the Word. Listen, let me tell you something. I'd go to church. I'd serve God. I mean, I just can't go time. I've got to work all the time. Listen, I've been there. I've done that. Look. I'm going to give this to the retired man who says he don't have to work. Amen. Look, we allow our, our lives to struggle to keep us down. Amen. We allow our lives to the things of work that hinder us and to work on us. Listen, I know what it's like. I remember, it ain't been just a few years ago. I remember, it's been about three years ago now, but I remember I spent a big, I spent 30 years Climbing that ladder of success. Hey man, started out in an old, I started out in a mechanical plumbing trade, digging ditches, out there, and got up to run the office, run the office for the company over in North Carolina. I climbed that ladder, climbed that ladder, climbed that ladder. Never run I made. The more miserable I got. Hey man, I know what it's like to feel like and get bills piled up. Get your eyes bigger than you want. You ever had eyes bigger than you wanted? Amen. Amen. Look, you got more payments coming in. You got more money going out. You do pay money coming in. Amen. You ever been in that situation? Amen. Hey man, look, you, you don't know what you're going to do from one paycheck to the next paycheck. You don't know what's happening. Hey man, listen, there's somebody that here needs to, I think I need to know what I'm talking about. Hey man, I think I need to know what I'm talking about. Let me just tell you something. That, that weight of that pressure, hey man, I got to keep up with the Joneses. Hey man, I, I mean, I got to have this, I got to have that. Hey, let me just tell you something going to cost you to work more. I'm going to tell you right now, if you've got something that you desire in your life that's going to keep you from God, your desire is in the wrong place. Don't be trying to light me low. <laughs> Look, man's trying to do it the worldly way. I'll tell you right now, I'm glad you did that, brother. Because the world, look, let's look. world will go to a doctor. They'll try to get that doctor to take that problem out of their life. But I'm here to tell you the only way, real way to get rid of it, hey, is to give it to God. Amen. I'm here to tell you, you'll get with the, with the way of the word. Hey, you'll have financial problems in your life that'll come on you and it'll burden you down and you'll never be happy. You'll never be able to serve God the way that we're designed and the way that we're called to serve Him. Amen. Amen. We're going to do it through Material things of this world will do it through I mean, look. TV. I mean, we all like TV, right? Well, let me just say something. TV, that old television, man, it'll keep you from serving the Lord. Amen. And I think every one of you are going home to throw your TVs away. And if you got anything over, keep the five inch call me. I'll come help you load it in my truck. <laughs> Amen. Look, that's not what I'm talking about. How many times do we feel like we ought to sit down and read that word of God when we turn the TV on? How many times when you got the TV on do you turn the TV off to actually read that word of God? 
Amen. Listen, how many times do you feel like you were to go and visit somebody? But the next thing you know, you're sitting down watching your best show and watching your shows. Amen. Now, let me just tell you something. Now, there's this little thing called on demand, or there's this little thing called DVR. Hey, if you don't know that, it will record the show. So when you get back from what you're supposed to do for God, you can still watch it. Amen. Hey, let me just tell you right now. Don't let that television, don't let that work. Don't let your friends, don't let those things become become a, a hindrance unto you. I'll tell you what, there's something else that always bothers us a lot of times is when I remember a time in my life when I thought the only thing that was important had to do with the basketball. The only thing had to do with other importance. I drop everything. Just for that ball. Let me just tell you something. I'm glad. I mean, listen, I, I love, I mean, we love you. Man alive, I do need to make words one time in my life with you. We can allow sports to dominate our life. We can allow activities to dominate our life. We can allow hunting and fishing to dominate our lives. Amen. Tired of carrying that thing? Yeah. Tired of carrying that thing? Yeah. Let me just get somebody. Somebody else got a bird in the heart today. Amen. <coughs> <coughs> you can't go Lord carry that feeling. That's what she's been telling me. Amen. She carried it long most time ago, brother. I know you have a hard time anyway. Oh, look, you said I'm 80 years old. I don't need this. I don't need this, son. Well, let me tell you something. I don't care if you're 80 years old. I don't care if you're 20 years old. I don't care if you're 10 years old. You still. Get rid of, hey, pass it on now. I think she thinks it's funny, amen. She thinks it's funny until somebody else is carrying the load. I'll tell you what, the Bible said for us to bear one another's burdens, amen. Some of you today say, well, I ain't got no problems with all that stuff. I'll tell you what, I'll guarantee you this. There's a lot of you in here today that's got problems that nobody else even knows about. You've got problems I don't know about and I don't want to know about, amen. But God knows all about them. You've got things that's going on in your life. I said, well, listen, how we talk a lot and I said, in there the other day uh, uh, we, we, we talk a lot about this world we see things going on in this world and my business almost got me convinced that we're the crazy ones because everybody well, we think everybody else is crazy but look I was thinking that we was talking the other day man the things that children and people go through Hey, we have no idea what they're going through. Hey, Amen. I, I have no earthly idea what some folks are going through. Now, look, I do some of you. Some of you, listen, I, I, I didn't grow up. I didn't grow up a preacher. Hey, Amen. I, I didn't grow up in a Christian home. I, I didn't grow up that way. I, I didn't go to, y'all know my story. I didn't go to one school more than two years in a row. I moved all over the country, moved all over the place. Didn't know where mom and dad was half the time. I, hey, but I can tell you this much. I, I had a heavenly father that looked after me everywhere I went. Yeah. All those places that I went to, all those places that I moved to, I could have ended up in a lot of things. Amen. I could have ended up doing a lot of different things. Let me tell you, some of you in there here doing some of those things. Amen. We've tried things that would just hooked us. Amen. We've got temptations in our life, things that nobody even knows about, some that some people may know about. Amen. There's all different kinds of drugs and alcohol and all these things going on in our life, not just drugs and alcohol. Amen. Those are vital and temptations that the devil uses uh, to hook people and keep them in. Uh, you say, well, I got this under control. Uh, well, let me tell you something. Listen up! I don't care who you are or what your temptation is. Uh, you think you got it under the control. Uh, I'll tell you what kind of control it's under. Uh, it's under the Satan's control. Uh, because God's the only one. Uh, hey, he don't control it. Uh, he sets you free from it. Yes, hey, man, uh, he don't allow you to keep it and keep it in control. He takes you away from it. He takes it away from you, sis. Amen. He takes it away from you. He takes it. He don't take it away from you and give it to somebody else. Hey man, look, she done passed that thing on down. <laughs> Glory to God. Done passed her burden on down to somebody else. Pass it down that young. You see what she did? She gave it that young man right there. Let me tell you up. Now, I'm, I'm glad you did, sis, because you're getting ready to get it right here. Hey man, listen up. Moms, dads. Listen, aunts, uncles, that burden you're carrying around, that thing you've got in your lap, you want to know what you just did, what she just did? 
sister, she passed it down to her nephew. You know what her nephew did? He had to bear it because she had it. Let me tell you what you're doing right now, mom and dad. A lot of your kids are bearing burdens. Yeah. Hey, they don't should never ever have to bear, but you're bearing them because you're too lazy. You're too stubborn to get up and put it all on. Amen. 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 Too lazy and stubborn to put it on the altar and give it to God. Too selfish. Listen, if you come from somebody pat you on the back, you come to the wrong church. That's good. Hey, Amen. Good. Good. God loved me enough. He loves you enough to send a hard-headed preacher your way. Hey, Amen. And let you know that you can get things fixed. Our children are suffering. You say, how hey, you know that? Because I suffered. I've been through it all. Hey, Amen. I know what it's like to have a mama drunk. I know what it's like to have a daddy not to be found. I know what it's like to see those things. Let me just tell you right now, ain't nothing any better. Hey, than when I got in a real family, when my Lord, when my Lord come, picked my burden up, and he gave it to somebody else. He gave that dirt. He took that burden away from me. I didn't have to listen. I didn't have to see it no more. God don't take one burden and give it to somebody else. He does away with it. Amen. He does away with it. I don't know what your burden today is. I don't know what you're facing. There's a lot of people here today get, I mean, legitimately. I mean, you may be facing something. You got started off innocently. Amen. I saw a new guy this week. Been on drugs. He got addicted, he got addicted to oxy. And he got addicted to pain medicine because of a back injury that he had on the job. He is doing it. He was, he's in rehab. He's in rehab. He's going through some stuff getting out of it. I told him, I said, look, I understand all those. I understand this situation. It's not that innocent. God give us doctors. Let me just tell you right now. Not all doctors are from God. Hey, man, you better find you a godly doctor. Hey, man, somebody believes. Here I'm telling you right now, these people in this world start out innocently. Some of us started out just so we fit in. I don't know what it was like fit in. Hey man, listen, you moved around as much as I did, you did everything you could to fit in. Hey man. I mean, you tried to fit in and all this stuff. I know what it's like to try to fit in. I know what it's like to be an outcast. I know what it's like to kind of feel like you're on the outside. You know how long I felt like I was on the outside? Until I got on the inside. Amen. Till I got in the family of God. Yes. Hey man, you know what I quit worrying about what everybody else thought? When I got hooked up with Jesus. Hey man. Hey. Look, I got I got saved at early age. But I didn't turn I carried a lot of baggage. I mean I carried baggage all over the place. Listen, you, I mean how many years? Well I carried that for about eighty years. I know you have brother. That's right. I see it, brother. Look, it pays dividends, it pays off. Hey man, it pays off if we carry these things. Hey man. It pays off look at me. I know you've been you can get you get up that age too. Hey, when teenagers and things are going on and people are just pouring that out on you. Look, some of these folks here is the elder folks and they suffer through things that they started when they were teenagers. Hey, man, I started when they were teenagers, still battling them today. <coughs> what baggage they're carrying around is a whole lot bigger than that baggage. Hey, man, what they're carrying around weighs a whole lot more than what that weighs. Here's what I want to tell you today. You may think that you're not strong enough. You may think that you're not able enough. You, the, the music, listen to something else. The music that we listen to, the shows that we watch, the places that we go, the people we hang around with, all those things make a difference in our life. Yeah. I listened to a radio station. And it, it, it said this a while back, but it's got this slogan going on right now. It says this. Listen to us. Listen to gospel radio. For 30 days, to change your life. Amen. Just gospel, nothing else. Listen to gospel radio. I don't, I'm not here to tell you that it's got to be southern gospel. I'm not here to tell you it's got to be bluegrass, but it better be gospel. Amen. Yeah. It, better, it better be about the Lord. Amen. Amen. Listen, you better, listen I, I like all different kind of music, but here, listen to gospel music for 30 days, and you won't want to listen to nothing else. It, it, it just drives me crazy. I don't have to listen to nothing else. Because I listen to God. I listen to those things. Those back, those things that we've carried around. The music that we listen to, the things we do, the procrastination, the putting it off and putting it off and putting it off. 
Let me tell you what happens to putting it off. And I'm going to finish up here pretty soon. I remember several years ago, I was back when I was still out in the field working. I'd cut my finger, and I don't remember, you know how, how most of us men are, especially if you work outside all your life, you work that many just stick in the dirt and go on. And that's it. You might put a little electrical tape around it or something. You might put a little duct tape around it. And I come home and listen. You better put something on that. You better do something. About four or five days later, it got to the point that it almost looked like it was about to fall off. You know what had to happen? Had to cut it open again. Had to cut it open and get the mess out of it. Get everything, all the corruption and the stuff that was in it out. Let me just tell you right now, you may think that you're going to be all right. You may feel like it's going to be all right right now, but that's what the devil wants you to believe. The devil wants you to think that you're still young. The devil wants you to think you've got it under control. The devil wants you to think that all your problems, all your needs, and all the things you've got lies in him and lies in this world. I tell you what, that thing is a little heavy after a while. Don't you? Heavy, the longer it sets there, the longer it's on your lap, the heavier it gets. Amen. Hey, you think that's heavy? You think that's heavy? Well, let me just tell you something. And, uh, it ain't nothing compared to what this world wants to put on you. Right. It ain't got nothing compared uh, to what this world wants to drop on you. But you know what Jesus wants you to do this morning? Uh, he just wants you to come right here. Uh, and He just wants you to go and right there. Uh, because you don't have to carry nothing. Uh, he died on the cross uh, that you might be able to be set free. Uh, and free indeed. Has right. ever head bowed, ever eye closed, mm -hmm. ever Christian prayer, ever heart searching? <coughs> I ask you this morning, how is it with you? Are you carrying something around that you don't need to be carrying? Are you carrying something around that you want to get rid of today? That's not one person here today to call you out, point you out, or make fun of you. These people on this altar are already doing business. These people on over this altar are already getting help. The only one waiting is you. The only one missing is you. Did you come? Maybe you're here today. Maybe you've never been saved. You've never been saved. Would you be honest with yourself and honest with God? Just slip your hand up and say, Preacher, pray for me. Just slip it up, put it right back down and say, Pray for me. Pray for me. Maybe you're here today and say, Preacher, I'm not really sure. <laughs> I don't know whether I'm saved or not. Would you slip your hand up and put it right back down and say, pray for me. Pray for me. Maybe you hear this morning, you say, preacher, I know I'm saved, but I'm not where I should be with God. And I just want you to pray for me. Would you slip your hand up and put it right back down? Amen, 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 amen. God knows his hands going up. God knows every one of you. And he knows the burdens and the intents of your heart. Maybe you hear today and you say, preacher, I know I'm saved. I'm living for God, but I've got a burden that I've been, I need you to help me pray about. Somebody or something going on. Hey, man, you see his hands going up all over the house today. Maybe you raised your hand or maybe you didn't. You want to slip out of that pew. You want to get down out here on this altar. You just want to turn it over to God. Maybe you want to bring your load and you want to bring it down here to this altar. You just want to unload right here. Just unload it right here for God. Because God can take your load. He's got enough. He's big enough to take all our load. We just need to put it on him. Put it on him. Would you let him have it today? Maybe you're here today. Maybe you got something or somebody you need to pray for. Would you come? Would you come? Just turn it over. Just turn it over. He's big enough to handle it. Look, I got people all over my prayer list, people all over my heart this morning that needs it. I want to tell you something real quick. I don't drag invitation on very long, but I want to tell you something real quick. God brought you here today for a reason. Some of, most of you I know, some of you I don't. But I don't know your lives. I don't know your personal lives. I don't know what's going on in your, in, 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 inside you. But God told Samuel, he said, you look on the outer countenance of man, the outward appearance of man. He said, but I look on the inside. God knows your struggle today. He knows where you're hurt. He knows what help you need. And furthermore, he has it for you. 
he said, you have not because you ask not. Seek and you shall find. Ask and it shall be given. Knock and it shall be opened. You need to come today. You need to get on this altar. Oh, I got another day. I got another time. I got another hour. Life is but a vapor. It appears for a little while and then vanish away. We have no promise of tomorrow. The opportunity that you have here today is very much, very quickly, slipping away. There may never be another chance or an opportunity. Thousands upon thousands upon thousands of people thought they had an opportunity. Thought they had an opportunity. And then one day, the door of the ark shut. And the rain began to fall. There's coming a day that the door's going to shut on your opportunity to get it right. Don't wait. Don't wait. This is going to be the last verse that she plays through. It could be the last stanza. It could be the last call any of us ever get. could be the last time that Jesus comes by knocking on your door. Are you okay with that? I'm not. I'm getting on this other. I'm going to join these others. Join these others. And go to the Lord. Because there's always the room for me to draw closer. Brother Eddie, you pray for us. Thanks for coming before you again today, Father. Thank you. Thanks for God for the blessings. Thank, thank you for the love, the kindness that you show me for me. And Father, for salvation. And Lord, you know every young girl today. You know our heart. You know our thoughts. You know everything about us. You know us better than we know ourselves, God. And say, some of you are lost today. God, I pray that the Spirit would just convict and it wouldn't leave. Father, to them, give her heart and life to Jesus. Pray they can't find peace or rest. And she turns it over to Him. And God, all of us have burdens sometimes. Yes, and God, I know we carry it longer than we should. But I'm thankful we got a God that said in His Word that that's all you carry on Him for He cares for you. God, we're thankful we got somebody that cares. Yes. God, that'll take our burdens, whatever it be. No matter how big or how small, God, you're ready. God, if we would just get with you. Help us, Lord, and help us let people know, Father, that you're here, you're ready to take care of them, and that you're able, Father, able and above to do that, that we ask or even think. You're a wonderful God. Thank you for yes, Jesus. Lord. Thank you for your love. Thank you for the blood that he shed down your own Father, God. And, Lord, for raising up again to take his seat at your right hand and see for it, even when we won't give things up to you, God. Thank you, God, for everything that you do, for the words that we heard today. God, it's wonderful. For Brother Terry, we thank you. We thank you for this church, for each one that comes this way today, God. And I pray, God, that everybody got something from this message today. Help us out there yes. the to live that life, God, that people can see Jesus. See a place and see Jesus. And God, the reality of serving the true of the living God. Help us to do that walk and the warm yeah. people. No matter what's coming. God, we give you glory and praise for it all. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Hey, man. We sort of appreciate you this morning. Appreciate everybody that's come back to be with us today. And I hope if the Lord spoke to your heart today that you, you move on. Don't wait too late. Don't wait for another chance. King Agrippa said, almost. Thou persuadest me. Almost. Don't be an almost. I hope the Lord's touched your heart today. Maybe somebody's got a word of testimony on your heart. Hearts and minds are clear today. Do be much in prayer for service tonight. Remember, youth uh, come out for uh, play practice this afternoon at 6 o'clock. Shake somebody's hand, take your load. God bless you. All right, hold up, hold up. Everybody stand to your feet. Ask a couple of ushers to come up, and we're going to take up an uh, uh, offering for the building.